In this video, I'll give an overview of the basic ultrasound modes and image orientation that are required prior to hands-on scanning. Principle of ultrasonography is the piezoelectric effect. Piezoelectricity literally means electricity resulting from pressure. In the context of ultrasound, it is the conversion of sound energy into electrical energy. The opposite, that is conversion of electrical energy into sound energy is called the reverse piezoelectric effect. The picture on the left here illustrates reverse piezoelectric effect. These are the piezoelectric crystals present in the ultrasound transducer. When these are stimulated by electrical impulses, they vibrate and make ultrasound waves which go and hit the target organ. Now when the target organ makes echoes, these reflected sound waves stimulate the crystals again which now make electrical impulses which are then processed by the ultrasound machine and an image is displayed on the monitor. There are three main types of transducers or the ultrasound probes that we use in uh, regular nephrology practice. First is curvilinear or abdominal probe. This is phased array or cardiac probe. And this one is linear or vascular probe. Both curvilinear and phased array probes are low frequency probes. The lower is the frequency, the deeper the ultrasound beam can penetrate, but at the expense of resolution. On the other hand, linear probes are high frequency probes, which offer better resolution, but cannot penetrate deeper. So these probes are used to image superficial structures such as AV fistula or to guide dialysis catheter placement. And just by looking at the way uh, the ultrasound image looks like, we can tell what transducer was used to obtain the image. For example, the piezoelectric crystals are arranged in the form of a C in a um, curvilinear transducer and the image appears like a fan covering a wider area. And with a cardiac probe, the piezoelectric crystals are arranged in the center of the probe and the ultrasound beam emerges from this one point giving the appearance of a pie or a pizza slice. And this arrangement of piezoelectric crystals facilitates movement of the probe in between the rib uh, interspaces. And in the linear probe, the piezoelectric crystals are arranged uh, linearly and that's why the image is more rectangular in shape. And some of the newer handheld devices use ultrasound on chip technology instead of piezoelectric crystals. This technology helps uh, to condense the properties of different transducers into one. That way you can use one transducer to perform multiple imaging studies. However, the resolution of the images is not as good as piezoelectric probes at this time. However, the image quality is expected to improve in the future. Coming to the basic modes that we use, the first one is the B mode or the brightness mode. This is the regular grayscale imaging uh, that we use um, uh, ultrasound for most purposes. And the image is a combination of multiple dots of varying intensity. And the scale ranges from complete white to black and in between there are different shades of gray and there are actually 256 shades of gray. And the next mode is the motion mode or M mode. When you turn on this mode, you get a cursor like this and you put on a, a moving structure of interest. Then you get a tracing which plots movement over time. So basically M mode allows you to gauge the movement of a structure over time. For example, this is an image of an inferior vena cava transverse axis. And this is the M mode cursor passing through the middle of the vessel. And uh, it gives a tracing like this where the widest diameter is the diameter of the inferior vena cava in expiration and the narrowest diameter is the diameter of the inferior vena cava during inspiration. That way you can calculate the exact percent collapsibility and put in your node. The next mode is the color doppler. Color Doppler allows you to detect flow, that is blood flow, and also tells you the direction of the uh, flow. For example, in this image of the liver here, you see two blood vessels. One is blue, that is a hepatic vein carrying blood away from the uh, liver and away from the transducer to the inferior vena cava. And the red vessel is a portal vein 
carrying blood from the intestines into the liver and towards the transducer. So away from the probe is blue color and towards the probe is red color. You can remember this uh, with the mnemonic part where blue is away and red is towards the probe. And color Doppler uses a, a principle called frequency shift. So it uses the frequency information from the moving object that is the RBC. Say when the RBC is stationary, the reflected frequency is almost same as that of transmitted frequency and there will be no color displayed on the monitor. But if the RBC is moving towards the transducer, the reflected frequency is higher than that of transmitted frequency and it is uh, represented in the red color. If the RBC is moving away from the transducer, then the reflected frequency is lesser than the transmitted frequency and the color is represented as blue on the monitor. And the next mode is power Doppler. Power Doppler is similar to color Doppler in the sense that it represents flow. It allows you to detect whether there is a blood flow or not. But instead of using frequency information, it uses intensity of the returning signal. And unlike color Doppler, it does not tell you the direction of the blood flow. There is no red and blue, but just one color of varying intensity. The advantage of power Doppler is that it can detect low flow states. For example, if you are draining an abscess, and uh, um, you don't know if there is flow, then you turn on the power Doppler mode. And, and in some cases, when you are trying to do kidney Doppler, the color Doppler pickup is not so good. So in those cases, you can turn on the power Doppler and uh, try to see if there is any flow. And the next important mode is the pulse wave Doppler. The pulsed wave Doppler is a form of spectral Doppler, which allows you to quantify the blood flow. It represents how the blood is flowing in a vessel. So when you turn on this mode, you get a cursor like this, which is a dotted line, similar to the M mode cursor, but it has an opening, which is called Doppler gate or sample volume. So you put that sample volume in the vessel of interest, and then um, it depicts the blood flow. For example, in this image, you are seeing a kidney here, and the sample volume is placed in the interlobar uh, area. So you are capturing both interlobar artery and interlobar vein. So above the baseline here is the arterial waveform with systolic and diastolic phases, systole and diastole, and below the baseline waveform is the venous waveform, which is continuous. So in pulsed wave Doppler, above the baseline is like a red on color Doppler, which means flow is towards the transducer. And if the flow is away from the transducer, it is uh, depicted below the baseline. And the next uh, important settings that you uh, are expected to know prior to uh, initial scanning are depth and gain. Depth is self-explanatory. Basically, you are adjusting the scale so that you want to put the structure of interest almost in the middle of the image to visualize all its features better. And almost every ultrasound image that you look at has a scale which consists of some dots. Usually, the space between uh, two dots is about one centimeter but it changes depending upon what depth you are using. And if, you, if your depth is inappropriately low, you are wasting so much screen space, that way you will miss some uh, important details. And the next one is gain. Gain is nothing but brightness of the ultrasound image. In the middle, you see um, a carotid artery and jugular vein uh, image, which has optimal gain, where you can appreciate all the structures. You can see the muzzle here, you can see the uh, uh, nice, um, thyroid gland with homogeneous echo texture and the image on the left is over gained which means it's too bright and uh, it's easy to miss structures such as a nerve uh, which is especially important uh, during procedures and this image here is under gained or is too dark in such images we might be uh, missing important structure for example this muzzle here appears too dark that you might mistaken it for a uh, blood vessel Coming to the orientation of the ultrasound image, whatever image you are looking at, whatever organ you are looking at, the principles of orientation remain the same. In general, structures that are closer to the probe are on the top of the ultrasound image and the structures that are farther from the probe are uh, at the bottom of the image. And 
every image uh, has a screen indicator or orientation marker which is usually an alphabet representing the manufacturer or um, something else or, or, or just a dot in this case here it says p which means which stand for philips manufacturer and similarly every ultrasound probe has some orientation marker this screen indicator corresponds to the orientation marker on the probe so which means for example if i am doing a kidney ultrasound i hold the probe with the orientation marker towards patient's head so this part of the screen becomes towards patient's head or superior and this part would be inferior so if there is a lesion here in the kidney i know that there is a lesion in the upper pole of the kidney and if there is something here i know there is a lesion um, in the lower pole of the kidney and just one caution when you are using cardiac preset that is when you are uh, doing focused cardiac ultrasound uh, using a phased array probe your orientation marker on the screen will flip that means instead of being on this side the orientation marker will be on the right side of the image apart from that rest everything is the same the screen uh, indicator still corresponds to the probe orientation marker structures closer to the probe are on top structures farther from the probe are at the bottom nothing changes except the direction of the probe mark uh, sorry the direction of the uh, screen indicator so when you put all these things together this is how you orient yourself to um, an, um, a kidney image for example so here you are looking at the right kidney so you look at the right kidney through the liver so liver is on the top of the image and kidney follows that and the orientation marker is towards patient's head so this is uh, superior and this part of the image is inferior so after orienting yourself to the ultrasound image you should know how different structures appear on ultrasound screen the general rule is that if a structure reflects most of the ultrasound uh, you are hitting it with the structure appears bright or in other words it's hyper echoic or making more echoes and if the structure is a good transmitter of the ultrasound waves that means it's not reflecting much or it's not making much echoes it, it appears darker on ultrasound and when we use the terminology hyper echoic hypo echoic or anechoic we are talking in terms of relative echogenicity that means how bright a structure or how dark a structure is compared to the adjacent area because there are 256 different shades of gray every shade is darker than the previous uh, so uh, brighter than the previous shade and darker than the next shade so in general structures that are bright are hyper echoic some examples include stones bones fibrous structures such as diaphragm and air it's important to recognize that air appears white on ultrasound because we are so much used to seeing it as a black area in uh, chest radiographs and uh, ct scans and that's particularly important where you can confuse emphysematous pyelonephritis with air in the kidney uh, and mistake it for stones and uh, soft tissues appear in different shades of gray so they they can be hyper echoic compared to the um, surrounding substructure or hypo echoic that means less bright compared to the surrounding area depending on what they have internally and anechoic structures are those which completely transmit the ultrasound waves and uh, do not reflect any that's why they appear black on the ultrasound screen so blood is black um, that's why blood vessels are black and urine is anechoic so hydronephrosis and urinary bladder appear black serous fluid or any clear fluid is black so um, kidney cysts appear as black structures and uh, that's it for now happy scanning thank you